the reason it's so easy for me is I know everybody has their own problems. Nobody gives a fuck about me. Once you understand that nobody gives a fuck, shit gets real interesting. You got your perspective. I just wanna be happy, don't you wanna be happy? It is true, I have absolutely no idea what I'm about to do. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I had an, last year when I was here, somebody gave me an all blacks jersey with my name on it and I was super pumped and I promised to wear it. And is it you? Dude, so I was super pumped, I packed it, right? Number five, Vaynerchuk, I was super fired up. So like, I basically like squeeze every minute. So I'm in the hotel room and it's like, I have to shower and get ready in like four minutes and meet everybody downstairs. And I, I rush and I put it on and it's a small. <laughs> Fuck. I was, I was so fired up to wear it, but I didn't get fit enough in that year, but I appreciate it. Now I'm gonna have to frame it. Anyway, I'm super thrilled to be here. Thank you for coming. Um, there's a whole lot of different things on my mind. I am really, really excited for Q&A, so uh, I'm looking forward to that, so please line up for that because I think the details matter. I think a lot of the macro points of view that I share, uh, if you consume my content, you're gonna hear them, uh, you're gonna understand them. You know, the ironic thing is, I think there's two things I do extremely well and they're very, very, very different. One, I'm extremely good historically and I hope to continue to be at understanding where the current attention graft of human beings are. What platforms, what technologies are capturing our attention and how do I become a storyteller on those platforms and build business. You know, my dad's liquor store was a a business that was not making a whole lot of profit off of its three and a half million dollar base and I grew it to a 60 million dollar business in a heartbeat because every penny I was spending on Google AdWords, email marketing, and having a website in 1996 to 2001 was worth dollars. Every nickel was worth dollars, and that's how it got built quickly. My career is a very similar story. In 2006 and 2007, I was producing enormous amounts of content for YouTube and Twitter that ended up working out. And, and that has basically been my whole career. I come here today and can tell you regardless of what you do for a living, no matter what you are selling or what kind of professional you are, no matter if you're B2B or B2C, I know standing here right now that the two biggest arbitrages as platforms in this market are TikTok and LinkedIn, right? I know that if you go home and spend 30 hours and really research the content that's working on both, TikTok's very young, but so was Instagram and Facebook. LinkedIn is no longer just business and if you sell workout equipment and just put out content there, it will work. So what I've done really well my whole career is play in two very opposite directions. One, the state of the union of the consumer, which basically is day trading. I have to look at that stuff every day, every day. I'm paying attention and I have to spend a lot of times on things that don't work out. I spent enormous amounts of time on apps like Social Cam and apps like Peach and apps like Vero and Vidler and many other things that many people here don't even know because that's part of what I have to do to stay on top of things. You hear about the ones that work out, nobody cries for me about the 50, 100 hours I spent in a couple months on a platform that you know, a month later means nothing and all that time was wasted. That's what I do over here. The other thing I do, which is all the way over here, is I basically have five, seven, 13, 22 core principles that have been always true in business in perpetuity, right? Which is, I am desperate, desperate with this audience to be the person that provides the most value for free. Desperate. Every day, how do I put in all these hours of work and then how do I put it out on LinkedIn, YouTube, podcast, Facebook, Twitter for free? It is not a funnel to get you to pay for something. It is fucking free, period, end of story. And so I do that. And that is giving more than you ask in return. If you're running a marathon and trying to build a meaningful business, that will always work out. Patience, I believe in it. I believe that we live in a fast society now 
where people can see millions of different things and see different impressions of what people are doing and get very quick into FOMO or why haven't I? And the reality is I believe in patience almost more than anything and it comes so not natural. Everybody's looking for the passive, for the angle, for the quick fix. How do I get there faster? How do I get there faster? How do I get there easier? Literally the only thing that's interesting to me is slow and hard. Literally the only thing that's interesting to me in business is slow and fucking difficult. And that is basically completely polar opposite to the 99% of advice that is being put out there today. So for me, those are the two frameworks for me. How am I fast as fuck and how do I go super hard and how do I, while I'm standing there looking into things to be prepared for what I do for a living and then how do I go at the highest level in my mind, in my mind, slow. In my mind and my strategy, slow, tried and true. The shit your great, great grandparents believed in is the shit that I believe in mentally and then in action, I go fast and hard. I sleep seven, eight, six and a half hours a day. Everybody thinks it's two or three. It's because I go so hard the other 15, 16. I believe that that is the reverse of most people. I think mentally, everybody wants it fast and easy. And I think in their actions, they're slow. They like take lunch and shit. (laughs) And that's it. That is how I see the world. That is what I observed from others. The question for me over the last half decade is why am I able to go fast? Why am I comfortable to give the advice that I tell you? So much of the fluffy shit that I find myself in now, which is parenting advice, mental advice, happiness, empathy, gratitude, it all came from my frustration of 2014, 15, 16, when I'm giving you the keys. Do you understand in the first two minutes of this talk, I delivered on what many of you actually want from me, which is I've been so consistently right, and there is so much value in being first, right? It's always a game of best. You can still start a YouTube channel and a podcast tomorrow and completely dominate, even everybody's doing it, because you're just better at your genre. But being first helps. If you're right about first, it does help. And that is a far majority of what people want from me when I read my DMs, my emails, my text messages. And I gave it to you already. It's done. For 80% of the people, the thing you're looking for from me has been delivered. It's called TikTok and LinkedIn. You can go fucking home and eat. (laughs) The interesting thing though for that 80% that we're looking for it is 98% of them won't do anything about it. That is what's interesting to me. How many people here by show of hands are in the B2B business? Raise your hand. Raise it high, please. For, keep it up, high please. Real, I, and everybody, don't half ass it, I wanna see it. Thank you for some of the late hands. Just throw it up, I'm just real curious. For everybody who's got their hand up, thank you, you can put it down. For everybody who just put up their hand, if you are not producing 25 pieces of content a day for LinkedIn, you are fucking up. 25 a day. Most people haven't posted 25 pieces of content that just raised their hands in their life on LinkedIn. It's happening. Everything that you heard other people took advantage of on Facebook and Instagram from 2011 to 2016 is happening right now in the B2B space on LinkedIn. To me, the question is, if you're here and you know who I am and you've been hearing it from me for the last eight months, why aren't you posting? That is what I'm trying to figure out. Is it that you don't know what the fuck you're actually selling and so you're scared to expose yourself? Happens, I believe in that shit. Is it that when you get one negative comment, you fold like a cheap fucking chair? (laughs) That's the majority. And that laugh and that majority is what's led me to this mindset thing that I spend a lot of time on, which is like, oh shit, I need to be very grateful and feel a little guilty that the circumstances of so much adversity as a child of being an immigrant, not speaking the language, getting picked on for that, being terrible at school, not being great at sports, that because my entire childhood was adversity, that I fell in love with losing. 
I love no. I love your judgment. I love you telling me I'm not or I can't. I'm used to it. I can't believe that I stand here today during this time and have now understood that all the stuff that sucked as a child, all that adversity is completely the foundation of my success. That we live in a generation now of so much prosperity for so long and we have over coddled two generations of adults that most people just can't deal with adversity which is the biggest reason people struggle with putting out content on the internet because they can't deal with the judgment. So many people here know exactly what to do to have a much happier life and don't do it because one account that's anonymous makes fun of them and they can't move forward. That is interesting ass shit. And so I'm spending more time trying to figure out how to unlock that. I talk more and more about, you know, if I can get one person here to leave today to go home and actually have a conversation with their mom, their dad, or their spouse and actually tell them what they're thinking and actually tell that person in their face why they're so upset with them because they continue to spew negativity and no to them, which is what's actually stopping them from living their life. If I can get one person to do that here, that would be a good use of my time in New Zealand on this trip, right? So to me, that's what I think about. I think about why am I so, today I spoke to three separate people, two employees and a friend, who were completely incapable of being the bigger person in every situation. I push so hard for them to be the bigger person. They act like the bigger person, the person doesn't reciprocate, and they completely crumble. They're mad that they were the bigger person. They feel, it's incredible to watch people feel crippled by the thought that somebody's getting over on them. It is devastating for me to see that people struggle with the idea that kindness is the strength, not the weakness. So many of you are being told to be less kind and less of a pushover and charge more and stand up for yourself and it's ludicrous talk. Kindness is the ultimate strength in our society. It's true. It's true. And when you deploy it and you give more to your customer, to your audience, when you're actually putting out content that isn't a trick to get into a funnel, your free seven day trial that's a complete piece of shit to really get somebody to sign up and pay is dog shit. Dog fucking shit. When the intent of what you do is selfish, you will lose. And here is why. I don't know if you've heard, but now there's a thing called the internet. And in the internet, everybody can play. Which means, unlike many years ago, somebody who has better intent, who likes what they're doing more than you, which means they're gonna work harder at it, is gonna come across and take your stuff. And what you're gonna be left with is the bottom feeding people, the most desperate. And if you wanna put your head on the pillow by attacking and bottom feeding at the lowest of the low of our society, knock yourself out. You live you. It's just not interesting to me. And so I am really interested in the time we live in. First of all, a couple random thoughts about content. I believe that producing content on an everyday basis at scale is the answer to 98% of the questions in this room about their businesses, the nonprofit, the, like you wanna get somebody elected, all of the above. It is the answer. The ability to post produce for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, your podcast, your vlog, your text messaging platform that you're gonna have, TikTok, the ability to understand how a picture or a video or a written sentence works different on every one of those nine platforms is the unlock. It is why I have super strengths right now in the marketplace. That is my deep religion. I do not use a platform to post a photo to all the platforms because I understand that they have to be unique within the environment they're delivered. I can't make an all blacks reference in New York. They don't know what the fuck rugby is. In the same way of me making a subtle baseball reference here is not gonna play. Context matters. 
and so many people just wanna check the box of putting out content, they don't understand that the reason I'm winning across every platform is because of the context, not the content. That I understand that you, you, the same person, when you go on LinkedIn is different than that person an hour later on Instagram because your mindset's different. Sliding into the DMs is different than getting a job. You understand? I believe that that ability and your ability to be self-aware of what kind of communicator are you? Are you comfortable in front of a camera? Many are not. Can you write? I cannot, which is why 2002 to 2006 was the biggest blank part of my career because that was the era of blogging and I couldn't afford to pay writers and I can't write for shit. To this day, my poor English teachers cannot believe I have five New York Times best-selling books. <laughs> and so that self-awareness and ability to pr- produce content that's post-produced to the places where people are paying attention is what's been going on for 100 years, right? The best writers, when newspapers dominated, were important voices. The person that had gift for gab on the radio in the 30s and 40s and could hold an audience, she or he won. Muhammad Ali understood television, that's why you know him. And so the individuals that understand how to story tell, where other humans are at that moment in history have consistently outperformed the rest. Where I get frustrated and where I implore you to understand is unlike the last hundreds and hundreds of years where somebody was the gatekeeper of who was allowed to talk to the world, the person that owned the network, the producer, right? Today, we don't have that. In the same way that the best rapper in the world can now just upload to SoundCloud and Spotify and win because a record label doesn't have to sign her, you can do the same on these platforms. This is free. These platforms cost nothing to distribute on. There's some level of cost in making, but at first, like I did for the first nine years, I produced myself, my words, my videos. And so I am frustrated slash excited to push this evening to get you to produce. And there's only two things. It's either in your head because you're insecure or you talk a big game and you're lazy as fuck. You have to make enough debating, enough overthinking. I have so many answers, not because I was smart, it's because I made millions of pieces of content and watched what worked. I have a thought, I make. It does well, great. It does terrible, even better. That is my framework, that is what will work for every single person from that corner to that corner. It's what's working for every brand and business, period, and and the story. And that's it. That's what I'm trying to get you to do. So, as I I segue to to Q&A, here's why I did that and what we can do in Q&A. Why I did that is macro, micro is my world. This is why are you not doing it, and then I'll tell you how to do it, right? That's it. Why and how? If the people are about to line up right now wanna ask me about managing people, I have a thousand employees, I've done it my whole life, happy to answer. If you wanna talk about where to invest your money, I've done a good job with it, happy to answer it. If you wanna ask anything about anything, influencer marketing, you know, Amazon arbitrage, you know, blockchain, augmented reality, message bots, I'm here, I'm happy to answer it. But they are all secondary to what I spent my first 10, 15, 20 minutes on. If you are not making content for the internet, you're making a humongous mistake. If you are not, thanks mom. If you are not, (laughs) and uh, thank you, and let me tell you why, because you're gonna regret it. Let me promise you one thing that I enjoy. In my goodness, I do have my own little weird things. I love taking this video running it in four years on whatever the Instagram is of the day, 
to people in New Zealand and I'm gonna look at you right in the camera because you're gonna see it because I'm gonna know what I'm doing and I'm gonna say you fucked up. I came in 2019 and I told you what to do and now LinkedIn and TikTok are too big, it's too loud, it's not working the same way and why didn't you do it? I do that every day. I live it every day now. So I know I'm gonna live it again. So please either debate with yourself or line up and ask a question now that unlocks why you're not making because making, not meetings, making, not reading, making, not coming to a Gary V fucking conference, making is gonna unlock your shit. Not watching my content and thinking you're doing something, actually doing something. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Line up. Let's go. Let's do it. So how many mics do we have? This one? Those just the two in the middle? Great. I have no idea why this is not being filled up, but I highly recommend you fill it up. Oh, you've got them over there? Understood. Okay. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Hi, Gary. Thanks so much for being here today. Um, my question is about... How do you act from your true self and from a place of love and wanting to connect with people but then take no bullshit when they give you bullshit? Well, first of all, a lot of people aren't actually giving, they're manipulating. So first I have to understand if you're manipulating or if you're actually giving. Let me explain. Because giving is actually giving without expectation. So when you give, the person's reactions have no weight. What most people are doing is they're fake giving. They're doing something with an expectation of something in return. So to answer your question, first you need to audit, are you actually giving or are you setting up something that you're looking for? And if you're actually giving, when they give you too much bullshit, if you're purely giving and you're being taken advantage of, stop giving to that person. Okay. There's seven other billion people to give to. <laughs> yeah. I mean it. It's really important to me. Yeah. Like, you know, I, 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 I see a lot of my own employees, friends, startups I'm an investor in, contemporaries, acquaintances, former employees. They think they're giving. They're not giving. Hmm. You understand? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Hi, Gary. My name is Patricia, and we actually came to this event last week in Sydney, so... Thank you so much for allowing us to get up and ask questions. Thank you. Uh, we're based in Queenstown and we have an accommodation business. Okay. It's grown very organically and we've taken 12 months to sort of figure out whether or not we want to go large with it. Okay. We've got some good numbers now around what our demographics look like. Okay. And we need to really kick off a good marketing strategy, but a big chunk of our demographic uh, the Asian markets. Asia. So what would your recommendation be? Are you talking from China? Or China you... specifically. So um, WeChat? Yep. Weibo. But marketing online, talking about um, you know, videos and whatnot on Instagram, what's the best strategy for that when it's a foreign language? Transcribing it. Right. So just literally, instead of having a video, just... <laughs> I know, you know, it's, yeah. it's really interesting. Like, I, I know we're getting giggles, but like what's super crazy is so much of this is very common sense and simple. It's that something happened where I just don't fear the thought of wasting time or money and everybody else does. People are either insecure and, or, and or have a fear of wasting time or money, which makes sense to me. I understand it. It's just the answer's in reverse. You need to go to KOLs, mm -hmm. right? Key opinion leaders, yeah. influencers in China. Pay them to give awareness to your business. You need to make content mm -hmm. and transcribe it into Mandarin and run it on WeChat and Weibo. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Firstly, huge fan, and I was in Brisbane last Thursday. Thank really you. inspired me. And I watched um, Elise Grace. You might remember her. She spoke to you. And I went home, and I was like, damn, why wasn't I that girl? So I booked flights on Sunday and flew over here yesterday just to see you and ask you two questions. Amazing, thank you. Um, I feel like the Grateful Dead. Everyone's touring <laughs> with me. <laughs> Firstly, I, 
you know, like I coach people and I, you know, step up, but I wasn't stepping up enough. And I've been going to start this podcast forever. So I actually started my podcast, went live last night. Good for you. Yeah. Um, and it's called Three Wines In. Everybody goes with my book, which is out soon. <laughs> but my next question, I'm sure you know what it's going to be. Can I interview you on my podcast? No. Oh. <laughs> no. But I'll make you a promise. Yeah. You get to 100 episodes, and I'll do episode 101. Thank you. I have one more. One more. What's up? Can I get a selfie? Selfie? Yes, you can. Come on. What's up, brother? Then I'll go ahead. Um, hi, I'm R- Rapaya. Hi, Rapaya. Um, my question is, I'm a bit unclear on what is business and entrepreneurship. Like, I'm... I'm a bit confused with what is it about? Like, is there any rules to play on? Well, yeah, don't be a dick. Got it. Um, but it's, you know, entrepreneurship and, and business is predicated on providing a service or a product in exchange for money. So is, don't be a dick the only rule? To me, <laughs> there's one other very important rule. Make more money than you lose. Because then you get to keep playing. But I, I mean, where are you going with the question? Help me here. Um... Because well, it's such a lofty, floaty, basic question. Yeah. So there must be something behind that. Well, because everyone is fluttering around with all these industries. And when I listen to other people with their expertise, it's different things. But when I listen to you, it's the same thing. I see a story on Instagram, the same thing as when I listen to you, as a uh, infomercial on a milk bottle in the 1800s. Okay. It's the same thing. So... I want to get, well, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, when it comes to bodybuilding, he's big on building that foundation. Yeah, so I don't want to be all flashy. I want to have this really still, smooth growth on things. So I think now I understand. So the number one thing that you need to do is just do that. I will. You know, what pe- my biggest fear is that people try to be like me yeah. And the only thing I want them to be like me is actually being themselves, right? Like, for example, I'll be very frank with you. I struggle at some level with the fact that my personality is so loud and hyper and high energy because be what I believe in, you know, I always say to people, I'm a tortoise in a hare's costume. I'm very slow. I'm mm. very patient. I'm meticulous. I like... You know, yet my energy is frantic and thus people think it's fast. Mm. But, but that's me and I'm fine with that too. And so I don't try to forcefully tone down. You just need to be yourself. I will. But another thing, mm-hmm. another thing I, that I'm very proud of that I think will work for you. I have never sold anything in my life. Not yeah. baseball cards, not wine, not VaynerMedia that I didn't 100,000% believe in. And I believe the majority of this room sells something they don't believe in. Yeah. They just want the money. Yeah. I want to um, be to, uh, for my people, Māori or throughout Polynesia, to be better because I was thinking of all these suppression things of as a child. And I think now, in my mind, I had this thought that now the suppression thing that everyone talks about is now a mental cage of yep. it. So I want to, uh, as humans, to expand instead of have a cap. I understand, and me too. And that's what I like to do. To do be. it. Well, you got it. Hey Gary, how, how are you buddy? So a wee question for you. So um, I'm a very passionate dad. Good. And I feel like dad deprived kids are really um, more susceptible to um, you know, failing academically, socially, they're more likely to go down crime and commit suicide. Okay. So I'm an educator here in New Zealand. Yep. I've been educating for 15 years and I've known 10 kids that have taken their life at my own school. Yes. So my question to you is, what's the most important thing a dad can do to help his kids live a life of purpose and meaning? Listen, the biggest mistake that dads and moms make is they don't listen. They try to impose. The number one thing a dad can do is pay attention to who their child is, not impose who they, wait, who they wish they were. Beautiful. I have no interest in my children being entrepreneurs. I have no interest in them being like me. 
I have interest in them being who they are and supporting the living shit out of that while making sure I instill kindness and empathy and gratitude and thematics that I know are very important. But for all the passion I have of entrepreneurship, the only thing I'm actually passionate about is self-awareness and for people to do what they should be doing. And parents are parenting their children predicated on other parents' opinion or the judgment of other parents, not based on who their kids actually are. Parents would rather have a bumper sticker on the back of their car of a fancy school and an unhappy child than a happy child. It's fucked up. Absolutely. Thanks, brother. You got it. Hey, Gary. How are you? Good, good. Glad you um, finally got to come back to your favorite country. (laughs) Um, Two questions. How do you constantly love the process? Because... The process isn't always fun, so what are some ways... It's fun for me. Okay, so what are some advice Find that you could give that to make fun it fun? Find one fun for you. Okay, <laughs> easy. Easy peasy, eh? It's, it's, it's that easy. You know, for, there, are, there are people in the world who genuinely love what they do, whether that's being a stay-at-home dad, whether that's yeah. being a painter, a chef. Right now, the danger of entrepreneurship is it's so predicated on fucking money that people mm. are doing shit that they don't like. You have to understand, my days off, I go garage sailing and buying shit for a dollar and selling it for two, Mm. right? Like, I'm on flights from America to Australia for this trip and I'm staying up for nine hours looking on eBay trying to buy Messi and Ronaldo rookie cards. Business, buying and selling, is my hobby. I don't wanna fucking golf. Yeah. So, So, it's about finding a process you actually enjoy that mm. may not map to the thing that makes you the most money, mm. I promise you, at 99 years old, living 90 plus years of happiness versus wealth creation always works out. Right, right. And another quick question, you've probably been asked this a million times. Can I run up on stage, grab a quick selfie with you, facing back, is that all good? No. No? But you okay. can come up here and I'll take a sal- selfie with you because I just want to be efficient. Sounds good. Let's do Thank it. Thank you. Go ahead, mate. Hi there, Gary. How's it going? Good. Uh, the question for you is, what's the biggest way to motivate clients or businesses that don't want to change? Uh, by speaking your truth and then actually not trying to convince them by okay. moving on to ones that are further along. Perfect. I have spent no time through the years with VaynerMedia, which was selling something nobody understood in 2009. I spend no time convincing people. Yes. That's the biggest mistake that businesses that do B2B business make on sales. Mm -hmm. They spend fucking years trying to convince the unconvincible. Yes. This is a very important breakthrough for you if you listen to me. There are literally meetings I have sometimes that are scheduled for an hour that's a new business pitch that I wrap up in 15 minutes cordially and leave because I can sense it's over before it started. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. It's the one. It's a very, very important answer to that question. Thank you so much. You're Can welcome. I also take a selfie with you if that's yes. right? <laughs> Hi. Hi, Gary. How are you? I'm super well. Good. Gary, I'm a long, long, long time fan. So I'm 51 now, so I'm Thank probably you. the oldest in the room. Um, I've been following it, your advice, totally, and doing the content and building the business, and I'm very patient. So where to from here? So where are you at? I'm doing really well. I'm doing the content and I'm really getting on with the social media. I'm doing everything that you've asked me to. I just want to know what's your advice for the next A few years. A fuckload more. Fuckload more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. how, honestly, play with me here. How many pieces of content are you putting out a day? Don't I'm bullshit trying, me. No, I'm not bullshitting you. Okay. I'm, try, I'm running multiple pages. I believe you. I believe you. How on many? my biggest page, probably 15 pieces a day. Great. Yeah. 30. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you a place where a lot of you can get a lot of pay dirt. Twitter. I'm, I'm really fascinated by Twitter and I looked at the metrics of what's going on in this country with Twitter. It doesn't have to be the biggest platform for you to get the most value. You can post, a, a lot of you have ideas, thoughts, hypothesis, you know, curiosities. Posting content on Twitter in written form with a default GIF that Twitter has where you don't even have to make design is an incredible way to say something and see if there's something there. That would be a way to get from 15 to 30 in a much easier way that's strategic, that helps you get insights, not just make content. 
Perfect. Thanks, Gary. And big shout out to DRock. And while I'm here, can I get my content creator, Zan, to get a photo of me with you? You can. Thank you. <laughs> Where is he? There he is. Go ahead. Go ahead, mate. I'm ready for you, bro. Hey, Gary. Uh, my name is Amani Alofa. I do uh, competitive gaming events for the community. Love it. Um, I think, do I mention the arena grounds? I don't know. What's Anyways, that? Oh, yeah, okay. Anyways, um, I've got a few questions for you. Uh, I was just wondering, no, sorry. I just wanted to congratulate you on the Minnesota spot in the Call of Duty World Thank League. Thank you. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Um, also wanted to see if you could um, touch base on your decision making around committing to the competitive gaming scene. I think esports is going to be one of the three biggest sports in the world in 20 years. Marvelous. Um, I was wondering if you could also. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I was wondering if you could also um, give a few words to, um, to, this, uh, to the parents and the young youth uh, to try and validate their, um, their choice to compete. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, I'm part of the generation where parents, much like they're doing the iPads and social media and phones now, demonize the shit out of video games and every kid that was on it was wasting their time. And meanwhile, if those kids stayed the course, they would be making tens, hundreds, or millions of dollars at events today and oh, be wonderful. legends in esports. I think parents are very bad at a lot of things. And I think one of the things they really struggle with is anticipating where the world's gonna be when their child is actually a grown up. They parent based on the past instead of the future. And to suppress, a, now when you have Booga winning $3 million at a Fortnite tournament, how is a parent walking around Earth right now not realizing at least giving their child a chance to show that they're great at video games is, is no different than them showing that they're great at rugby or proper soccer or golf? Like, we, mm. like I don't understand. The only thing I understand is that parent's mother or father or brother or sister or other parents are shitting on them for the amount of time they let their kid play video games and it is something that I wanna put pressure on because it is a fundamental mistake not every kid is gonna become a fucking gaming superstar, but showing your children that you support their interests is a very important forever win. Mm. Thank you for that. Could, could I just ask two more things? Sorry. You're getting well, a little greedy, big guy. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, um, go fast. Uh, oh man, I forgot now. Oh. Sorry. sorry. Oh no, could I, could I mention my gaming event that's coming on the 30th of August? I'm sorry? Could I mention my gaming event that's coming on the 30th of August? You want to pitch in this room right now? Yeah. You think yeah. that's a good idea? I don't know. Well, <laughs> I'm asking you a question. The answer is yes or no. I mean, there's a once in a lifetime opportunity. That means Might you well think, it. so go ahead. Um, hey, guys. <laughs> uh, so um, on the 30th of August, we're going to be doing an um, event called Gave, uh, sorry, Game Haven. It's mainly to focus around connecting the community and also, um, what's it called? Um, kind of encourage community, good community culture, healthy, um, what's it called, interactions online and whatnot. So if you guys want to drop by on the 30th of August at the Tier 2 Peninsula Community Center, that'd be awesome. Thanks. Yo, what's up, Gary? How, How are you? Doing, you? I'm good. Um, quite brief. I want to document, not cre uh, create. Not create. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. The thing is, I've got so many things I want to talk about, man. How wide or narrow do I go with my focus to as keep it interesting? As wide as humanly possible. Yeah, and why would that be? Because it's better. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. All right. Because the reality is you have no idea what anybody wants to hear from you yet. Yeah. So what are you gonna arbitrarily pick? There's literally no downside. Yeah. That's why. And would you give it an amount of time before you know if something's working or not? Yes. How long? Years. <laughs> so a handful of things at once, okay. Maybe wider. The even. number one advantage you have is the potpourri of your different interests. That's interesting. I like it. You know, the fact that I garage sale, sports cards, wine, business, that's what makes me different. And some people don't want that content, and I'm sure when somebody goes through my Instagram and sees to, this is a post around garage sailing, and they're there for social media tactics, they just skip through it. I'm not charging them. 
It only cost them a hundredth of a fucking second. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. Good. Thanks, man. You got it. Hey, Gary, how you doing, man? Super well, brother. So I got a simple question, kind of. Okay. Um, I've been doing business with my dad for the last two years. Okay. But because of a couple of shady deals and some false promises, we've unfortunately had to liquidate one of our businesses recently. Okay. So this has caused me to fucking hate business okay. because of all the sharks and the shady things that happen in the business world. Well, so may maybe you should hate the judgment calls that you and your dad made, not business. Yeah. So, so my second question for you is, how do you develop the mindset to kind of... By becoming accountable for the fuck-ups you guys made. You understand? Mm. So, so, just to give a bit of context, the fuck-up that we made, I know the fuck-up that we made, is that a gentleman came to us from a big company, said, yeah, we're gonna give you a contract, we're gonna give you a contract, we're gonna give you a contract. We saw the contract, but it never got delivered. Happens. Yeah, fair enough. You shouldn't have listened. Fair enough. You, sh you made a bad decision to believe. Mm. People need to be accountable. You know, like, I've had a really hard time getting ripped off. That's a skill set. Cool. But it's okay, because here's what's amazing. You're young as fuck. Mm. So now my intuition says, you may not make that same kind of mistake the next time. Mm. Or not put yourself in, a, I make mistakes all the time. They just won't put me out of business. Mm. Every time somebody comes to me lately, a lot of young, I for some reason went on this run of like 10 kids in like a month coming up to me at airports saying they got ripped off and without knowing a thing different than your scenario, I looked at them it's, and I said, because you wanted too much money fast. Mm. You know, people get ripped off when they try to make something happen too fast a lot of times. That might not be the scenario here, but I think you're smart enough to realize four sharks, nine sharks, sounds like one big shark, is not an indication to everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know? I just think everything's my fault, even when somebody steals from me. It makes me real happy. I mean it, I understand how that's, you know, it's my truth, it's how I think. I didn't need to employ that person. I didn't need to let them into my office. I think when you go fully in on accountability, the world gets really happy. Mm. When you think it's everybody else's fault and you don't have control, that's where people get upset. Cool, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so kia ora Gary, uh, my name's Rani and me and my brother were the ones who done the haka for you. I remember uh, last, last year, year very, very, very well. <laughs> very well. Um, I know there's two things um, that come which is about content and storytelling. Yep. So I just want to tell a quick story about what I said to you in Māori. Uh, te manawa titi is a bird that flies against the wind. Uh, te manawa piharo is a fish that, swim up, that swims up the current. Um, and that's one of the highest acknowledgements that I was taught from a mentor of mine. And I've never actually said that to someone. So uh, that's one of the highest acknowledgements in Te Ao Māori. And I just needed to say that to you, brother. So geza. No, my heart and my bro. Um, but bro, my... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my... <laughs> So um, my question for you, uh, Gary, um, I've been listening to you religiously uh, for a little while and pumping out content has definitely added a lot of value to my journey and uh, the more that I'm sharing, the more attention I am getting. Um, but I think for myself, um, and like three years ago, I wouldn't be in this position because of lifestyle choices. Yep. Um, but I think my question for you is, how do you deal with um, because I'm about to achieve the biggest thing that I've set out to achieve and I'm just getting a little bit overwhelmed. How do you deal with um, that big sense of scaling? With gratitude. Got that shit tattooed on my fingers, dog. <laughs> <laughs> then it sounds like this should be easy as shit for you, bro. <laughs> but it's hard you as You know, fuck. look, look I, think, I think that 
taking a step back and understanding when you achieve something that you've set out to that's big can be overwhelming and I understand yeah. that. But when you take it with humility and gratitude and you recognize that you put in the work and you did the right behaviors to get there and now what I would do is not smell those roses, don't get high on your own supply and set bigger fucking goals. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Gary, man. This is so crazy. Um, you have my life's respect. I Thank just wanted you. you to know that. I know you talk a lot about college debt. Yes. But here in New Zealand, our first year of university is free. I heard. With that, would you encourage more young people to try uni? Or are their pursuit of business or in creative fields more important to delve into as soon as possible? It comes down to self-awareness. For a ton of kids, that first year in uni is exactly right. And for other kids, it's right for them to go and do their creative journey, go travel to America, start a side hustle. The biggest thing I'm worried about when I talk about my real disdain for the American school system is that that means you have to be, an, you know, the alternative is you have to be an entrepreneur. It's just not true. I think a lot of people should go work and not collect debt and have a head start because American colleges with all the debt they have don't mean jobs anymore like they did in the 70s. When you have something for free, just because it's free doesn't mean it's good. Yeah. You know, and so it seems right, but it could be a complete waste of a year and when you go into a system that you shouldn't be a part of and you see people that are part of a system and it is right for them, it actually often leads to a lot of insecurity. You know, people start asking, why is everybody else here at uni having a great time? And I hate it, which gets them into a dark path. So I think it's a self-awareness game. And I think the most important thing, and as I look at young people, I always try to remind them, by the way, not only young people, old people, me, 40s, 50, 80, 90, like we struggle with contextualizing time. Life is fucking long. Like as much passion as I have for 20 year olds, I have way more passion for 50 and 60 year olds because they're thinking about wrapping it up and they're not even halfway home. The fuck are you, who's, who here is between 50 and 60? Like, you know, we grew up in generations where that was like, you know, up there. Like, but meanwhile, you fuckers are gonna live for another 30, 40, 50 years. <laughs> the fuck are we wrapping up? We're at fucking halftime. <laughs> I mean that. And we need to think that way. Everybody's winding it down, playing defense, wrapping it up. Let's go on triple offense. You have ex you're in the prime now. You know what not to do. And you've got half your fucking life in front of you. So your one year of going entrepreneur or going uni or, you know, is not going to mean shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, the answer is right <laughs> to all of it. Yeah. I love you, Gary. Can I take a selfie? You can. Hi, Gary. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you could offer an opinion about SEO and okay. search engine optimization. Is it dead? Is it it's worth spending dead. any money on it? It's not dead, um, but it's mature, which means it's not a deal. Got it? Yeah. That's all. It's not super complicated. Uh, you know, if you have a great landing page that converts, if your website converts, like I, I would do SEO uh, and SEM, if, it, if I liked the numbers, I just know that Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn do better when you're good at it. That, that's where people get confused. There's a lot of people here who think Facebook ads suck, but it's because they're bad at it. Got it? Yep. So it's still okay. It's just that I wanna make sure that you triple check, cross your T's and I's on the other stuff, especially LinkedIn. Sister, listen to me. Fucking LinkedIn. And I laugh, like sometimes I do these talks and I leave and I see on Twitter like, I wonder if Gary Vee's being paid by LinkedIn. Like, I've spent 20 years establishing, I have one interest, to be historically correct. I don't give a fuck if LinkedIn dies tomorrow. I care about today, this second. I can't wait to make fun of social media in 10 years. I built my wine business on SEO. Got it? Hi. Hi. Um, so we're starting an eco-friendly brand at the moment. Okay. We're about to launch, and uh, so we have limited money. Obviously, it's costing sure. a lot. Yes. Um, and what would you recommend the p first platform, or do we just cross all platforms a little bit? Are you selling big... something? Yeah, active, uh, uh, eco-friendly activewear. TikTok and LinkedIn. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. And Instagram, those yeah. three. Okay. Um, uh, Instagram is mature now with influencer marketing and content for brands, so if, if you were to do it five years ago when I was screaming about that arbitrage, yeah. it would have been better, but now with limited dollars, Mm-hmm. Here's why I'm pushing LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a platform right this second that you could have never posted on for your active wear, for your law firm, for whatever you do. And your first post gets organic reach that you don't deserve. Got it? That's why it's so powerful. TikTok, I think, is super interesting, but the content you make will probably have to be to get a 12-year-old girl to let her mom know about your brand. Do you understand? Yeah. So you have to be thoughtful. But my intuition is it's got a prayer to actually become Instagram. Okay. Awesome. And that's why it's worth investing because if you make it through 24 months and you're there on the other side and it does and you start it first, you can crush TikTok the same way that people crushed Instagram in 2013. Okay. Got it? Yeah, thank you. Can I get a photo? Sure. (laughs) Thank you. Hi. Hi, Gary. How are you? Good. Good. Happy to see you. Thank you. I'm happy to see you too. Yeah, awesome. My name is Thea, and my question is, what would you recommend for the young people who are figuring out their thing in life, who are also overwhelmed by the number of things they try and the number of information and courses they consume? They need to play out the game of judgment. This is a game of judgment. It's not overwhelming Mm -hmm. if you didn't worry what anybody thought. Bless you. Can I take a photo of you, with you as well? Only if you sit with me on this question for a second. Okay, sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> Too excited. The, like, you know, there is no right answer. People struggle with decisions without realizing they would never know what the other outcome would be. Mm-hmm. I make decisions every day in one second because I know that I won't know the other thing. Let me give you an example. I famously passed on Uber twice in the angel round from one of my best friends the worst financial decision I've ever made. I, I missed, if I wrote my normal check and I was writing plenty of checks then, I would have, I would have five to eight hundred million dollars in my bank right now, right? I, it, it doesn't even cross my mind as a loss because where I go in my mind, because this is how real life works, is if I did write that check, over the last five or six years, my brand would be even bigger, more known for such a great phenomenon. I would have been on different places, invited to different places, And in one of those times, I might have had to go to China to give a speech, and while I was crossing the road, get hit by a bus and die. No, I mean this. I'm fascinated by people's inability to not understand this shit is not binary, right? You might have picked the wrong person to marry, but the other person might have gotten cancer, and that that devastation might have put you in life's depression. Like, there's so many variables. I don't understand why people think like it's one way or the other. It's just, life is gray. This shit is not black and white. It's easy to make a decision with all these choices and information. Pick one. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) You can have a selfie now. What's up, brother? Hey, mate. Just wanted to say a huge thank you for coming. Uh, I listen to you every morning, so huge inspiration. Appreciate it. Um, Thanks for listening. Got one big question. Yeah. Uh, so I know you're a big advocate for eating shit for a couple of years so you can have caviar for the rest of your life. Yes. But you're also a huge advocate for happiness over money. Huge. So my question for you is, as a 20-year-old, I'm pretty young, got my whole life in front of me. Yeah. Would you recommend picking progression or happiness? Happiness. Happiness is progression. Okay. Got it? That's the confusion, brother. The question was confused. Happiness is the fucking progression. What progression? Title? An extra zero in your bank account? Buying dumb shit? Happiness is the fucking progression. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Can I grab a photo? The happiest person in this room, the one that wakes up with the least pressure in their chest, is winning. (laughs) Is winning. You know who's losing? The one who's so insecure that they're desperate to cheat to make money to buy shit to impress people they don't even like. We need to change the fucking game. We need to change the conversation. Enough. Enough. Fuck. 
Hey, Gary. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Super well. That's Pleasure. Good. Okay, so I'm working on like four things right now. Okay. Like studying. Okay. A job to survive. Yep. Internship, which is starting next week. Awesome. And two business ideas currently working right now. I love it. And I'm just like, feel like I'm just starting up. And sometimes I find like really hard to manage all these things in like 24 hours. Makes sense. And would you give me some advice or tips? Yes. How do you manage your day or how I can more manage my day? Because I believe when you have five plates in the air, if two break, you still have three. Yeah. You, clearly like me, like that game. Other people just want to have one plate and are petrified for something to break. So, laugh when a plate breaks. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I take a quick selfie? You can. Uh, kia ora Gary, um, firstly I just want to say a huge thank you. Thank um, you. I have depression and PTSD, so school things like that, and you truly have helped me. Thank Come you. Um, Shell and everything, like even doing this, I'm shaking, I'm sorry. No, I'm flattered. <laughs> um, my name's Portia, like the car. Yes. <laughs> I'm the 19 year old business student currently. Um, you helped me move out on Sunday. I moved out home for the first time into Oh, Sunday, I quit my job that wasn't making me happy. Monday, I left home, and now I'm here. That's amazing. <laughs> it's been a very productive August. Clearly. Day. Yeah. Um, I can't believe this is real, to be honest. This is real. Um, but I just would like to ask if you would ever consider d um, dabbling in ASMR content. I'm sorry? <laughs> um, would you dabble in ASMR content? Um, oh, ASMR? Yeah. Would I what? I might like, dabble in it. Like, would you create Would I dabble in it? Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? It's funny that you, a you asked that. I've been looking at it, uh, but I don't like talking about things I don't know. Mm -hmm. So the answer is I'm not sure. Yeah. But you catch me at an interesting time where I've been trying to, like, I've been thinking about, like, chopping down my words into, like, one tone. Like, <laughs> I've been, like, thinking about it. You know, it's funny. I have slept with a sound machine my whole life. And, and cool. dabbled in different things. The way I even listen to music, I think, is way more, yeah. you know, that than the way normal people listen to music. Yeah. Um, so it's a curiosity, but it's not something I'm educated about, so I'm not ready to, to really answer you in a thoughtful way. That's all good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, Gary, how are you? Very well, my friend. You? Okay, I am good. good. Um, I've been consuming your con contents from last seven years. Wow, um, thank you. Started my own business about three years ago. Okay. I did work for free, just like DRock did for you, and eventually started paying off. Yep. So thanks for that. You're welcome. Uh, I had no real, idea. Real quick, I want to bring that up. It is fascinating to me how much the business world, specifically the creative field, likes to demonize free work. I respect it. I understand it. But when nobody's willing to pay you for your work, your work is worth zero. And Free work has been a foundation of my success my whole life. And there's a lot of supply in today's world. So good, good on you, I'm glad it worked for you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you understand as a immigrant uh, in USA, I'm an immigrant here as well. Um, I, I saw you talking about Facebook groups uh, yes. back in the days uh, in one of your CNN interviews. So I started my group uh, to connect uh, with the community, it's called uh, United Indians in New Zealand. Love it. Uh, it has gone up to 24,000 people now, uh, all from New Zealand. Um, now, my question is, how do I make a living out of it? Like, I want to make money, you know, like, enough with the charity now. <laughs> I think the number one you think, so one of the toughest things is when you do something to convert an audience like that into monetization, you've now changed the relationship, right? It's like if you had a best friend for seven years and now you decided you wanted to hook up with that person. <laughs> sometimes it works, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. My biggest recommendation if you're sitting on a Facebook group that is vibrant yeah. is to ask them. Mm. You should make a very honest video and basically say, I've been doing this, I've been building this, and it is my personal ambition to now turn this into a business. What can I do that would make all of you happy instead of doing what everybody else does and try to do something without you being a part of it? I have a funny feeling your answer is in one of those comments. Okay. 
Uh, the last one is uh, I also started a drop shipping. Okay. Uh, you know, I saw you talking about the drop shipping yep. as well. Um, do you think it's dead now? Because no, it's still there. It's not even started. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Gary. How are Hello. you? Hello. Thank you for uh, for for mentoring from last two years, uh, 2017. You stick with my no more excuses. I love it. And stick with me right now. And uh, from that from that day, I had only twenty thousand dollars in my account, and thirty thousand dollars debt. And right now, I have forty thousand dollars in my account, and hundred thousand dollars my business on my own. Congratulations. And I just want to know, what should I do in my? How should I grow more? Um, I mean, I'm only a twenty-five year old. I think you should invest in sports cards. Sports card. Yes. <laughs> sure. Well, I'm I'm on tennis right now anyway. Why not? <laughs> I mean, look, I think, I think, A, I'm not kidding about the sports card thing. I think it's about to explode. B, um, I think you need to think about what got you there. A lot of times, you know, great, but like, tactically, whatever got you from the financial place you were there to now, a lot of times people look for the next step, and the next step is just doing a lot more of what got them there in the first place. Got it. Can I take a picture, please? You can. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Super well. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Um, we had a little rant in South by Southwest in yes, 2016. Yes, I recall. Yeah. So um, I've been thinking about the voice uh, distinction yes. and kind of thinking, well, a little bit like the railroad coming into continents and voice is maybe the new railroad. Voice is definitely the next highway. Yeah. So beyond a podcast, beyond... Alexa, give me a watch. Um, where, where do you see it going? Because I haven't heard too much. Let's not downplay Alexa, give me a watch. Saying Alexa, give me a watch is like saying that an app on the iPhone in 2009 is just that. The amount of Alexa skills and Google skills and Apple skills, they will be the toll booths of our society in a decade. Let me remind you of, you know, in the early days of iPhone apps, people spoke about them the same way we just talked about an Alexa skill. Right. Let me just remind everybody in this room, the following things are just iPhone apps. Facebook, Instagram, right? right. Uber, right? So the biggest companies in the world, in my opinion, in 10 or 15 years, have the potential to just be an Alexa skill on top of an Alexa device. Right. So Got that, it. So you see that as the platform that is kind of... I don't know who's going to win the home. Yeah. Right? There could be a Chinese company. BMW may decide to make speakers and everybody goes there. But whoever penetrates the home with a device mm -hmm. has an open platform for us to build on. Right. Whoever builds the most meaningful apps on that platform will build very, very, very uncomfortably large businesses because it is much faster to be in your kitchen in 2029 and say, Alexa, send me a pizza than it is to find your phone, open up whatever version of Seamless you guys have here, find a pizza spot, hit four buttons. When you understand how addicted you will be to voice devices in a decade, you will think back to this talk and realize how fucking smart I am. <laughs> Second one. Just one more was yes. my, my son finally likes listening to you in the car. Thank God. Because of the rookie cards. So <laughs> do, you think he, do you think he and we can do it properly from New Zealand? You don't really you need know, to be there You know, I haven't buying. dug enough. Yeah. And I don't know what the secondary market here is. Isn't, uh, well, you know, I don't know what the Ebays or the Facebook marketplace. I don't know where you flip digitally here. Right. I'm not educated. Um, but I do think you can. I, yeah. I do. And I think there'll be niche markets. And I think... There's a lot of ways to go with cards. It's really interesting to me that cardboard pictures on Pokemon or Magic the Gathering or soccer or football or what have you has a real upside. It makes sense. When the whole world goes digital, there's human intuition to pull the other way and I think that's got a lot to do with it. Cool, thanks. You got it. Hey, what's up, Gary? Hey, brother. Um, my question for you uh, today would be, how do I make raw content look more appealing to people? Um, and when I talk about raw content, I mean... I um, am passionate about talking about mental health and depression and that um, only because I've overcome that stuff in my life, but 
I feel it's more my funny dance videos that draws a lot of the traction, but it's more the, I just want to encourage more like the younger people and the people who have, are going through those same life experiences. Don't over worry about the likes. Okay. Can I make it more appealing or should I even worry about making it more appealing? You, you can. I don't know if you have to worry about it. Mm. You may want that creative challenge, mm. but the way you do that is by trying a bunch of different things. Mm. The problem is people are so caught up in short-term metrics, mm. they intuitively know what works mm. and they keep doing more of that yeah. instead of doing what they want to do. Yeah, yeah. No, that's You'll good. keep making those dance videos. The pretty guy or girl will keep putting out shirtless posts yeah. or booty shots instead of talking about what they want mm. because they're so addicted to the short-term metric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just keep putting out more of that raw just content. Just keep putting keep it out. Cheers. Keep putting it, and, and raw content or what you're talking about is really the creativity's in the words and how you put them together. Mm. You're, what, you're one three sentence video away from changing the equation. Mm. You just have to keep doing it and deal with the ramifications yep. of it not doing as well as your videos where you dance. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. Thank you very you much. Got I know it's been times up, but I'm gonna keep going since they're not coming. I also wanna take a question or two from up there. I feel like you guys have been left out, so I gotta figure out how to do that. Oh, you got a mic up there? Or are you just raising your hand? Go, talk, I'll repeat it. Um, how do you choose which platform is good for your business? How do you choose what platform is good for your business? So, what? Let's just be very direct. What? You can see. <laughs> you can if you got some fucking acrobatic shit, or you know, or you want to just do it from there. What? What is your business? What? What's that? Lawn maintenance. So for me, I think Facebook and, Inst and uh, Instagram and LinkedIn will probably work for you. You know, like, and by the way, again, this is some of the themes today. And try Twitter, and maybe you make a funny video of you mowing lawn on the background of music and all of a sudden goes viral on TikTok and all the dads of the kids that see it become aware of your business. Like, like to me, this is just one big game of make. I can give you advice, I can try to limit it. Here's my bigger thing. If you have a business that you want to be successful, my bigger question is auditing your time on what you're doing when you're not working or what you're with your family so that you can have more time to make across more platforms. You know? You know, like people are like, oh, I have limited time. I'm like, okay, I understand there's family and all that, but if your ambition is to build a really nice sized business to be successful financially, I think we need to start auditing Netflix and Fortnite and Gary Vee videos. <laughs> Cheers. Hi, Gary Vee. Um, I'm, I'm a lover of your content and so is my sister. I have a question for Please. you. I have a business right now. I'm self-running. I run, I run a character. Please tell me it has to do with your hair. <laughs> sort of. Because <laughs> it's fucking amazing. I run, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I run a caricature business, and right now it's going a bit too well, if you know what I mean. Like I, I don't, but tell me. It, it terrifies me because I have no competition currently, and I have, um, I'm just worried about the clientele running out or competition coming in or a coming storm of any kind. Let me, let me give you one storm that you can't pay attention to. Competition. Yep. Yep. The, one of the great themes in this room, brother, that is hurting people is they spend more time worrying about their competition than they do about their employees or their customers. When I tell you I know nothing about my competition, I know nothing. Not a fucking clue. It doesn't matter. What, what a lot of people struggle with is knowing how much abundance there actually is. They fear that them losing something to somebody else is actually taking from them. They don't realize how much there actually is. We struggle with quantifying abundance, we struggle with quantifying time, and so please don't worry about competition. Um, Somebody copying you is a good thing, not a bad thing. Yeah, um, what about the other storm, sort of storms? Like how do I uh, cement my roots in the community basically, or? By leaning in and providing them value. Yeah. You know, by understanding what they're looking for from you and delivering on that. Okay. You know, the reason I have a real community is because I'm delivering. I'm bringing more value. I'm giving you guys way more than I'm asking for in return. Like, way more. You know, and most people are fake giving because they want your money. I don't want your fucking money. <laughs> I want your admiration. Can I take a selfie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Let's do it. Hey Gary, uh, God, don't stop my voice, so bear with me. Hey, no um, so at the moment I'm working full time and I'm also working a side hustle, a couple of, at the moment. Uh, but the one that's caught my most interest is freelancing film content for businesses. Like it. And my ultimate goal is to uh, eventually run my own digital marketing company or agency. Okay. My question to you is, uh, with a limited budget, is it tangible to scale this business uh, to the number one spot in New Zealand by outsourcing 100% of the content that I don't create for my clients? Maybe, but unlikely. You so just you'd don't, say you don't have, would be best. You don't have enough control. Mm. And number one means what? Like stature, dollars? To be honest, I don't even know what that is. That's fair. So I think, look, I think when you outsource, it's not yours. Mm. So like freelancers so instead of having I understand a, the rationale yeah. for it up front, but I think the way you'll actually get there is to convert to full time over time. Okay, so start with that potentially and use some, all right, yep, sweet, thanks. You got it. Any questions up there? Okay, great, I'll take it. You're welcome, what's your name? Mimi. Mimi? Yes. That's cute. <laughs> so I'm here six hour, and I've got- A hair salon? Yeah. Okay. And I've got eight staff, and I've got- Eight people, people in your staff? Yeah. Keep going. And I've got three apprentices, and Three like what? Apprentices. So apprentices. Yeah, so my whole business model is that I grow people. Yep. So I don't hire other people from other salons. The ones I've already got, I used to work with- I understand, so you have, I'm just doing this for everybody else. You have your eight, and you have apprentices because you don't want any of the outside work, the way people do it on the outside yeah. affecting your way because you have a unique way, yeah. and so you do apprentice. I do something very similar, so go ahead. Okay, so at the moment I've got three apprentices. Okay. I've had them all for the last one I've been hired about two and a half years ago, so I've been trying to hire more, and it's been a two and a half year process. Just, just six months ago, I hired five all at once because I just knew that some of them were gonna fall away. Okay. Now I've got one left. And okay. She, you know, she's a point, right? Like, okay. what I'm finding is that because I'm working with young people, yep. mostly young people, and I'm getting them from hairdressing schools, I'm getting people who are saying, I want to be a hairdresser, they're paid to try to I got be a hairdresser. They don't, they don't want to work. They don't, okay. they don't want to show up. They ask me for money. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I can take those three I've got. There's two, things, there's, two, there's two things to do. A, realize that your management style is not working for them either. That's an important observation. You know, like we have to adjust. You're, hold, you're holding them to an ideology that may not be as practical to their reality and casting judgment on millennials or these random 11 people is not gonna do you any good. You know, you know I'm, not, I'm actually not doing that. Well, they don't know that I'm doing that. <laughs> but you are doing that. You are doing that. But guess what? Let, no, no, this is great. How many humans are we talking about? We just had five, and how many prior to that? about two and a half years, so I'm saying probably about 12. 12. Do you know how hard it is to get somebody? No, I don't know how hard it is. I only have a thousand of them. Listen, listen, two things. Two things, I really want to help. Two things. One. This, listen to me, listen to me. Your, your, this framework is going to lead you down a very shitty path. You need to stop casting judgment and you need to take a step back. The number, if you were my sister and we were flying home, I'd say the first thing I want you to do is call all 12 of them and have dinner with them. And ask them why it didn't work out for them. And then when you get seven of them saying the same thing, Fix that. Good one. Gotta go, two more. I knew Mimi was gonna come through. Thanks, Mimi. All right, yes, yes, sir. Um, what you, you just have a little ramble about um, AI. AI? And social. Yeah. And blockchain. Sure, I mean, AI and blockchain are both with social, you're just overlaying it, so I don't, I'm not too overly worried about how they interact with each other because they're macro technologies that will, to your point, affect social. I think the bigger thing, at such a young age and thinking about those things, what you're gonna look for is timing. Where a lot of people are gonna win and way more people are gonna lose is not getting the timing down when blockchain, AI, 
hits scale. VR, for that matter, hits scale. So they're gonna affect tremendously, right? I mean, you look at Pokemon Go, that was a worldwide phenomenon that changed people's behaviors. You'd have to anticipate that that is going to happen in a lot of IP, entertainment, a lot of opportunities to storytell in the real world through a phone, through, you know, you also have to anticipate technology, contact lenses that naturally are activated by AR are gonna do much better because it's less friction. You don't have to hold up your phone. When you walk into a store and you have those contact lenses, are you gonna be able to see virtual inventory? There's so much coming. I wanna remind everybody that 15 years ago we didn't have smartphones. Like, this is just starting. How many, watch this. How many people here remember growing up without the internet? Raise your hands. I mean, so we're just starting. So I think blockchain's an incredible technology that is gonna create peer-to-peer dynamics like we've never seen before. Um, So to me, the big theme versus what my guesses are, because it's too early, is making sure that you really pay attention to the timing and then you strike it. Sir. Hi, Gary. How are you? Uh, not too bad. Um, so I'm a big believer in hard work. Um, Me too. And basically, I like, kind of live like that. Good. I think the downside is that I tend to want to do everything on my own. Um, and okay. also, I've like, got high standards. So like, I've like, locked myself in the room after work to like, learn JavaScript and build an app, like, to do the graphic design as well. Um, but it does take a lot of time. So I wanted to ask you, for a person that's like, starting out, would you say it's best to like, take the time to learn everything yes. on your own and do it? Or I like it. it. I don't think it's bad. Yeah. You know, I think one of the big vulnerabilities for a lot of people here is they want to do social media content for their business now, and they heard me an hour ago, but they're going to go back and hire somebody who's 25, and they're not going to know how to judge if it's good. Instead of going home and putting in the 30 or 40 hours to learn and post and try, they're going to take the shortcut and pay some young person, like their nephew, to do it. I got that. I'm a brother. Let me tell you something. To be who I've been professionally for the last 25 years, which is have the ability to be the cashier at my wine store or the CEO, to be a community manager in Vayner Media or the CEO, the fact that not one person can walk out the door and that creates any anxiety for me because I'm a practitioner of every skill set is my biggest strength, not my weakness. And the fact that you're such a young fucking dude and have your whole life in front of you, I'm a big fan of learning skills, especially if you clearly like it too. Yeah, I enjoy it. So it don't, let the, don't let the thesis of scaling fast trump the truth of having skills. Cool, well, thank you. You're welcome. I'm gonna sneak one, one, one. This is gonna Hi, be the Gary. last one. Apologize, go ahead, ma'am. Hi, um, I'm a photographer. Great. Um, I'm slaying it on LinkedIn, doing really well. Get most of my business from there. Hold on. I, this is important. I'm sure, because I want to bring value here today. If you, I'm sure you wouldn't think that a photographer is the one that's killing it on LinkedIn. It is yeah. not the natural way that we think about it, right? True story. I'm aware, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. On the other hand, I'm doing rubbish on Instagram. What the fuck? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. Who knew? Um, I've been banging at it for about a year, two years now. I tried to to apply the same strategy on Insta. Big fail, absolutely. So I flipped it. I tried to do just general photos, keeping it all pretty. Still not working. So other than friends, kids, and other photographers, I'm just doing rubbish on Insta, and I'd like to know if you've got any tips for that. Well, tip number one is to do a lot more on LinkedIn. Right? You're, You're the manifestation of my thesis. I came here and told everybody that when you buy, which is produce, when you storytell on platforms that have a lot of attention, but most people are not filling the pipes yet, and the ads are not filling the pipes, you get more than you put out. It is the nature. It's like buying beachfront property in an island that isn't popular yet, and then miraculously 25 years later, it is popular, the price went up. That's what you're doing right now. Mm Instagram, you now have to be best. It is unbelievably competitive. Everybody's there. My intuition in this scenario is to actually triple down on strengths, not round out weaknesses. Cool. 
I like that. I do Clifton strengths. I'm all about the strengths. So I, how yeah. often are you posting on LinkedIn? Every day. How often? One about, no, about 10 times a day. Love. Yeah. My direct, uh, you know, kind of advice is to push it to 20. Okay, cool. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. Go, go, fast. Um, earlier you talked about, oh, that's loud as shit. Um, <laughs> earlier you talked about um, the two main reasons people don't do what you talk on stage. You said 98% of them will go home and they won't take any action. You said either it's because they're in their head and it's they're insecure. It's now 97 because that lovely photographer just inspired three people, for sure. Go ahead. Either you said it's in your head and you're insecure yep. or you're, you talk a big game but you're lazy as shit. Yes. Um, I, I don't think I'm lazy but I have been a pussy. So I, I wanted to do YouTube, I've, I've wanted to do, make content on the internet, but because it's a personal brand and it's not been like something I can hide behind, if I'm, if I'm marketing a product, say, um, I've been a pussy, I've been scared of my friends, family judging me. Correct. And I wanna ask, how do I stop being a pussy? <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's funny, I always equate it to riding a bike and swimming. I think it's something that we can all resonate with, where, you know, you're just, you know, it seems way scarier than it is. Mm. You know, the reality is, is you grew up in a framework where you overvalue people's opinions. Yeah. The only way for you to change that is to start getting as many opinions thrown at you as possible. Yeah. Like even now, like, thinking about it, coming up here, like, oh, I'm scared, a whole bunch of people. Of course. But, like, as I'm doing it, it's, like, not as bad. Who gives a fuck, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're just... You know, which I think is easier than the judgment of your parents and friends. Because you're right, fuck them. <laughs> but your parents and friends is your framework. Yeah. And it often has the answer. I genuinely believe the most blanket advice in this room is to really audit your friends and your family and start limiting your interactions with the ones that are broken. Doesn't mean cut them off completely. Yeah. Tough to completely cut off your dad. But limiting so that you don't hear it, I'm a fan of it. And do you think you need specific intervention? Say, hey, fuck you, or should I just yes. do it? Yes, I'm a big, I'm a huge. <laughs> should I just do it and no, ignore? Both work, yeah. but I'm a huge fan of fuck you. Here's yeah. why. Because a lot of times, by having that conversation, you had a perception that wasn't even there. It's like a pimple in high school. Like everybody was so fucked up with that huge pimple, but when they got to high school and were completely scared of it, everybody else had their own shit. Nobody gave a fuck about your pimple. <laughs> and so, you know, you may think like your friends might think it's dorky or your dad might think it's a waste of time, and then you tell them they're dealing with their own shit, bro. The reason it's so easy for me is I know everybody has their own problems. Nobody gives a fuck about me. Once you understand that nobody gives a fuck, shit gets real interesting. They got their own problems. Thank you, New Zealand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.